Sometimes it's a bit hard to solve a differential equation, but if someone tells you the answer, you might be able to verify that it's true. So here's our example. Verify that y equals a e to the x minus x minus 1 is a solution to dy dx equals x plus y. Now, if you wanted to find the solution to dy dx equals x plus y, you would integrate that, but it's tricky because there's an x and a y in there. But we can prove or we can verify that this is in fact the solution by letting y equal this in this equation and seeing if it works. I always find this a bit hard to wrap my head around. So we're letting y be this and we're going to check that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side in this equation. So the left hand side is equal to dy dx and the right hand side is equal to x plus y and we which we think that y is equal to this so if y is equal to this then the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to a e to the x minus 1 that's just the derivative of that now if the right hand side is equal to x plus y and we're letting y equal this we can say that x equals x plus a e to the x minus x minus 1. Okay, x minus x, they cancel each other out. We have a e to the x minus 1. Left hand side, derivative of y with respect to x is a e to the x minus 1. Right hand side, x plus y is equal to a e to the x minus 1. The left hand side equals the right hand side verified. Done. I have verified that y equals a e to the x minus x minus 1 is a solution to dy dx equals x plus 1. Now we can couple this with a part 2. Now that we've verified that this is a solution to this, we can find the particular solution if y equals 3 when x equals 0. Because this is not a particular solution, this is just a general solution. Because it's got this a value here, which is a stand-in for any value. Same as like a plus c when you do any other integration. Alright, so if y equals 3 when x equals 0, we can just sub these values into what we think our solution is and solve that for a. Super easy, subbing 3 in for y and 0 in for x, but a equals 4. So our particular solution is y equals 4e to the x minus x minus 1. So we did part 1 here, we verified the solution was true. We've done part 2 here by finding the particular solution given some values for x and y. Here's a second more complicated one. Verify that y equals e to the 2x is a solution to this wild equation with a second derivative plus the first derivative minus 6y equals 0. Same procedure here. We're going to let y equal e to the 2x and then we're going to verify that the left hand side of this equation equals the right hand side. So the left hand side is the complicated one the right hand side is not at all complicated because the right hand side of it is zero. So let's work on the left hand side. Now we believe that y equals e to the 2x. Now that means that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 2e to the 2x and the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 4e to the 2x. Now that I've got that out of the way, I can use this, this, and this information in this bit here. Because the left hand side is going to be equal to the second derivative, which is 4e to the 2x, plus the uh, derivative, which is 2e to the 2x, minus 6 times y, and y is e to the 2x. And it's pretty easy to see that this is going to be right. 4e to the 2x plus 2e to the 2x minus 6e to the 2x is 0. The left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Therefore, this solution is verified. But I'm going to blow your mind here because this is a solution to this, but it's not the only solution to this. So, new question, question 3. We're going to verify that this is a solution to this. Same uh, differential equation that we had before, different solution that we're going to verify is correct. Now, same again, we're going to let y equal a e to the 2x plus b e to the negative 3x. And then we're going to put it in here uh, and see if it works. Now, 
the right hand side's easy, that's going to be equal to zero. The left hand side is going to be more challenging. Alright, we need a second derivative and we need a derivative of y that we can put into our equation. So the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be 2ae to the 2x um, minus 3be to the negative 3x. And the second derivative of y with respect to x is going to be equal to 4ae to the 2x plus 9be to the negative 3x. And now we can put uh, this in here, this in here, and this bit in here. I might need to move this thing out of the way. All right, so it's a doozy. Had to get rid of my title card here. All right, we've got a second derivative. We've got the first derivative, second derivative, first derivative, and we've got negative 6 times that. And hopefully everything's going to cancel out because we need it to equal zero by the end of this whole thing. Uh, I'm just going to fix this up a little bit. Everything's expanded. Let's look at the terms. 4ae to the 2x plus 2ae to the 2x is 6ae to the 2x minus 6ae to the 2x. They're cancelling out. Happy with that. 9be to the negative 3x minus 3be to the negative 3x minus 6be to the negative 3x. They are cancelling out as well. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. They both equal 0. Therefore, we have verified that this is a solution to this. Finish off with a slightly different question. Same sorts of skills, though. Find A and B if Y equals this is a solution to this differential equation. So, um, same deal as always, we need to let y equal that. The equation we need to be able to sub it into has a second derivative and a first derivative, so we need to calculate those as well. Now I've just gone ahead and done that. Um, now it, they are product rule questions, right? It's like u and v here, u times v, and you do a product rule and you get this. And then this is a product rule and you do the product rule and you'll get that. I've left out some steps here because I think you know how to use the product rule. I think you know how to find the derivative and the second derivative. Okay, now that we've done that, we can sub in y, dy, dx, and uh, the second derivative into our differential equation. So when I sub those three things into this, I get this big long thing here. This minus this plus this equals zero. And it feels like a big problem, right? Because... I don't know what A is, I don't know what B is, and that's what I'm trying to do, and I've only got one equation. It feels like I need simultaneous equations to make this happen. Let's simplify this a little bit. You can see everything has a common factor of e to the 4x. So I can factorize e to the 4x out, but then I can divide both sides by e to the 4x as well. And if I do 0 divided by e to the 4x, I'm still going to have 0. In other words, that e to the 4x is going to get divided by on both sides, and it's going to disappear. So that's happened. We've gotten e to the 4x out of the way. Uh, it still feels like a problem, though. One equation, um, an a value and a b value, I need to figure out both of those. Let's expand everything. So everything's expanded, still a problem. Um, but there are some things with x terms, uh, which means that they're like a variable. And there are some things that are just numbers, whether that's a or b, because they're just numbers, or the number 32. Let's group those. Now, that's good. That's better. You might be looking at it still saying, well, that's a single expression. I still need to know A. I still need to know B. Uh, the key is this. X is a variable, which means X can be any value. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 5, negative 7. But no matter what that variable is, the solution to this equation is always going to be 0. Now, the only way that that can be true is if this is 0 and this is 0. Because it might work for a particular value of x, but it can't just work for a particular value of x. It needs to work for all values of x. And having a 0 here and having a 0 here is the only way that's going to work. In other words, I have simultaneous equations. This equation equals 0, and this equation equals 0. Now, you can use your solving method of choice here. You can use elimination, substitution. You can put it into your calculator. When you do that, answers are going to pop out. Therefore, a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 16. They are our solutions. A pretty tricky question. It's pretty out there, but that kind of technique, that could save your life in a, in a trickier question in external exams and so on. 
All right, that's uh, verifying solutions to differential equations.